Good evening and welcome to the Ogden City Council meeting of October 10th, 2017. This is the 6 p.m. special City Council meeting. Please note that all council members are present. And with that, I'm going to turn the time over to Vice Chair Heyer to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, thank you, Chair White. And in the interest of uh, spreading this uh, honor around a little bit, we've asked uh, Kenton Moffat of our Engineers Department if he would lead us today. Fantastic. He's going to come to the front, and so if you would just follow his instruction, please. I know, right? All right, ready to begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Kenton. When you're put on the spot, you have to remember what the words are, too, I know. Um, making me sing the national anthem. That's that's true. That's probably good, though. That's probably good. Um, please take a moment of silence with me. Thank you. All right, we have a pretty fun night here. Uh, next on our, the agenda is recognitions, um, and I'm going to turn the time over to Council Member Garner. Thank you, and this is truly an honor for me. Um, there are two gentlemen here that are with the Raptors that I consider dear friends. Mm -hmm. So the Ogden City Council and Mayor proudly recognize the Ogden Raptors for winning the 2017 Pioneer League Championship Series. The Ogden Raptors' 24th season was one for the books. The team claimed the 2017 Pioneer League Championship title, unifying residents and strengthening our, our sense of community pride. The Raptors beat the Great Falls Voyagers with a two games to one series win in the finals, securing the team's first championship win since its establishment in 1994. The Raptors went 47 and 29, and hit a record 104 home runs in the 2017 regular season. The Raptors are an important part of the fabric of our community, and attending their games has become a valued tradition for many Ogden residents. Players, coaches, staff, and volunteers work tirelessly to provide a quality atmosphere to fans who attend the games. We are proud of the Ogden Raptors and their accomplishments this season, and are grateful for the hard work of the members of the team and their coaches dedicated to representing Ogden in a positive light, and we wish them much success in their future seasons. And this is an honor for me to do this this day, and I would um, like to ask Dave and John to come up and we'll present them with this plaque. And Right here, guys, we're going to do a group picture. Uh, uh, we, we should make sure Glenn gets in that photo. Come on over, Glenn. You've got the hat for us. Maybe you come down on the front. Hold on, Brittany. we got to get everybody on there. I mean... Wait for our, our natural leader. Got three. Yeah. Two, One, three. two. You can all see Dave brought his own photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dave or John will have to say something. We'll have you say a few words. Oh. Oops, sorry. Uh, 
Thank, first of all, thank you very much. Um, it was 24 years in the making. I remember when we first started playing down at uh, Fort Buenaventura as an independent club, meaning with no major league parent club, and trying to figure out if we were going to make this thing work. And uh, 24 years later, it, boy, time does go fast because it still feels that part of us are just getting started. Um, our thanks to the Ogden City Administration way back in the day with uh, Mayor Glenn Meekham and the City Council that believed in the concept of bringing professional baseball to Ogden. And then the uh, subsequent administrations, uh, Mayor Godfrey and Mayor Caldwell and the current City Council for still believing in the vision that we have. And it's been 24 years and on behalf of Johnny Lindquist and myself and all the other shareholders and the employees of the Ogden Raptors, we are proud to be Ogden City citizens and look forward, knock on wood, for another 25 years to go. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get even. Uh, thank you very much. We would not be able to have done it without several city council people helping us all along for 24 years and a couple of mayors or three. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll just say that we hope your parent company wins the series. <laughs> In one year. I'm not going to echo that sentiment. <laughs> Yeah, I know a city engineer that would. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, <clears throat> next on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, first is the regular meeting of March 21st, 2017. Council Member Blair. Yes, thank you, Chair White. I have reviewed those minutes, and they appear to be accurate as far as I can remember. And the joint session of June 13th, 2017. Council Member Lopez. Yes, Chair White, I reviewed the minutes and I found them to be accurate to the best of my recollection. In the special meeting of June 13th, 2017, Council Member Nadolski. Thanks, Chair White. Those minutes are accurate to my recollection. Joint session of June 20th, 2017, Council Member Stevens. Yes, Chair, they're correct. In the work session of June 27th, 2017, Council Member Garner. Yes, Chair White, I found the minutes to be correct to the best of my rec recollection, and I'll make a motion that we approve these minutes. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Garner and second by Councilmember Blair. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Also on the agenda is a common consent item for the Christmas Village Committee appointing um, Mar Marilyn Mazza. Chair White, I'll make a motion that we adopt the item under common consent. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Garner, second by Councilmember Lopez. This is a voice vote as well. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And is Marilyn here tonight? Okay, thank you. It's hard to believe that Christmas Village Committee is going to be coming soon, so. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, public hearings um, regarding the fiscal year 2018 arts grants. Um, Christy, there you are. Christy McBride, welcome. Chair White, members of the council. Um, my name is Christy McBride, Arts, Culture, and Events Division Manager for Ogden City. Um, we want to, on behalf of the City Arts Office and the Arts Committee, we want to thank you for your time tonight. Um, we're super excited to announce, we took a look back this afternoon to see how many arts grants had been funded because we saw that our numbers have been increasing, but back in 2012-13, we were funding around 15 or so grants each year, and because of your support and your continued funding to this program, also the continued uh, marketing and awareness reach that we've been trying to do over the last couple years, we're happy to announce that we had 26 applicants this year, so we're really excited about that. Um, these were reviewed by the subcommittee, including representation from city council and also the CED. And these were presented to the full arts committee and then to the city council for recommended funding. Um, 
happy to announce that all 26 of them have been recommended for funding. This is also due to education that we've given these grantees through the year to help them understand what qualifies and what doesn't, what types of things are good programs to present. Um, they range from everything from Ogden Eccles Community Arts Center that's been there for almost 125 years and brand new programs such as a dance program from Deja Mitchell that will benefit the Congolese refugees. So it's a broad range and we just want to thank you for your support. And we recommend that you fund, uh, administration recommends that, you've, um, that you adopt the proposed resolution 2017-20 to award the arts grants for fiscal year 1718. Questions for Christy? I just have one question. Um, I noticed there's one, two, three, four companies that um, just made multiple requests, like Good Company and, and Next. Is there anything mm -hmm. in our ordinance or in the bylaws that um, not limits? In the, not in the program support. So you can be one organization and apply for different programs. Okay. So those are program support, not general support. Okay, perfect. Any other questions for Christy? All right. Um, this is, you, you, you can sit down here. This is a public hearing. Um, is there anyone that would like to come up and talk um, specifically about this? <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, Brittany, can you bring the list up to us? Yeah, just give the list to Brittany and she'll help us coordinate that. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Well, then let's then go you get to go list. first. Yeah. <laughs> then, Michelle, you can go first. Okay, I'm Michelle. This I'm, is Reba. I'm Reba. We're with OFOM, Ogden Friends of Acoustic Music. We're coming up on our 11th year of the Ogden Music Festival. Thank you so much for um, hopefully supporting. And sorry, I'd like to address Chair White and the Council and Mayor Caldwell. Um, it's been a great um, run. It just gets better and better. And when, one thing we're super proud of is um, the family involvement that we have and the number of kids who have embraced our part of our mission to get instruments in their hands. And we had a group of them up on stage this, uh, this year where there were about um, six artists who, young artists who had been going to the festival for many, many years and are now playing music very well, so. Yeah, and we uh, intend to strengthen our youth miss mission this year uh, with more hands-on instrument things and some youth jams um, to get kids playing together. Um, so yeah, it's been incredible to see kids. It'll be our 11th uh, festival, Ogden Music Festival, this year. and. Um, We've just seen kids grow up at the festival with their families, and we see generations of families coming every year. Um, so it's a it's a really signature event for Ogden um, at Fort Buenaventura, and we hope that you'll see us June 1st through the 3rd at Fort Buenaventura. And I just would like to mention quickly a project we're working on that um, is really exciting. Uh, Jens Kruger, world famous banjo player and composer, is being commissioned to write a piece a banjo piece based on Ogden and our history and it should be rolling out right about the time of the 150 anniversary of the Golden Spike in um, April or May of 2019 and we're collaborating with uh, Chamber Orchestra Ogden. It's pretty exciting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, you've done a great job through all these years. Thank you. This is what she does when she's not saving lives yeah, in life flight around. helicopter. So I mean that's pretty unique. <laughs> and since it's right right around my birthday, I always I always think it's for my birthday, but apparently not. Hey, Carol. Hi. Uh, my name's Carol Jennings, and thank you for letting me speak this evening, and also for letting me thank you for the arts grant that was provided for me to p help produce the jazz festival this summer uh, in at Union Station and a couple of various uh, activities around town. Uh, we had three concerts, free concerts for community members, all ages, uh, on the uh, second Wednesday of each month during the summer. Uh, and we had an art exhibit about, it was called Jazz from the Station, 
25th Street desegregation and all that jazz. And the art exhibit is a pictorial uh, photo story about how not every civil rights worker was doing law and uh, following legislation in school. Some of them were producing music events around town. And consequently, these public places were uh, desegregated in advance of being forced to by the law. Uh, they came because they loved the music. So uh, that's a story that was told about Ogden. And then the, we, all the money that I received from this grant goes to pay the musicians who played at the three concerts this summer. And we organized a calendar of jazz events that's on a uh, little program that's going by. The uh, culminating event for the jazz at the station was a homecoming alumni event for the September Jazz at the Station, and, and it was the homecoming event for the WSU bands, and that included uh, alumni from the jazz ensembles and the jazz combos, and then the performers that played for us that night were all alumni jazz musicians that we've raised ourselves in our own community uh, at the university, and, uh, and they have their own uh, history that they get together uh, when they do their homecoming reunion, so we promoted jazz all summer, an art exhibit to begin and an art exhibit to end, and then the university had a, a jazz artist, Marcus Roberts, coming in, and we promoted that event so well that when I went to buy my tickets on Saturday, they were all sold out. <laughs> so in a sense, it was a disastrous victory for my home evening because I was going out to have a great time and instead I just got to sit home and think about all those other people who were having a great time. Jazz is alive and well in Ogden. It's my, uh, it's what I'm doing for the rest of my life. I've been doing the jazz at the Sky Room, different places that Weber State. When uh, I retired, we moved it to, to the Union Station. This is our 21st year that we've been doing this. And uh, it's been free to everyone. And I only just got smart enough to start applying for grants. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight, and thank you very much. My name is Pam Nelson, and I represent the Ogden School Foundation as their president. And I am just here to say thank you for a grant that is very needed any time that you can get art into the schools, which nowadays many people deem as something that is not necessary. We appreciate anything, any kind of help that we can get. So thank you very much for a grant that is worth every penny because you know that it is part of our um, bylaws that we have is the purpose of the foundation is to enhance the educational quality of every child in Ogden City. And being a former educator who began teaching when arts was very much a part of the curriculum, we thank you now because it does give an opportunity for teachers as well as our children to have the arts that are being very less funded in the schools. So thank you again. Thanks, Pam. <coughs> Good evening, all. My name is Joan F. Young. I am a very long time resident of Ogden. I'm here to thank you because I submitted a grant that would help us enlighten that Africa is not a country, but is a continent. And based on that, there are varieties types of dance. And so we are going to propose and show a concert from the sub-Saharan African dance style the hip hop style. And so we're so excited that this is coming up just at the same time that you have the Congolese now moved into. But also to let all of us know that Africans have been in this city for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat Posey from the Eccles Community Arts Center. I'm not 125 years old, but the center will be 125 <laughs> years old next year. So we're planning, you know, a great celebration for that. We've been in the building was there 125 years, so we're doing a big art celebration uh, with the 
throughout the, the course of the month of September. Uh, we want to thank you for your continued support to the arts. It's so important. We just recently dedicated our performing arts building. Oftentimes people say art and they think it's just a painting, but there's so much more to arts that we offer in the community, and we're so grateful that we can do that at the Eccles Art Center as well as other entities in the area. So we are really grateful to have the performing arts as well as dimensional art. So we're, we're grateful for all of the things that the Ogden City Council has done previously and past, and what you're doing now for us. We, we really do appreciate it. And my, I myself, I'm glad that you still believe in art. It's so important. And to reiterate back to what Pam had just said, when they take art away from children in the schools, it's very difficult for us to continue because we need the support of the community. And with your help and continued assistance, it gives us greater avenues to follow and to try to make art become more popular in the school system. One thing we'd like to uh, let you know that we're working on next year as a project, we're going to be building a uh, children's art yard that's going to be privately funded. In our on our campus, so we're excited about that, and that'll be one more thing that we can offer to the community and to the children uh, of the communities, because that's really where it starts. So again, we thank you for your continued support and believing in the arts. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pat. Ross Reeder, I'm the director of sales and marketing for the Piri's Egyptian Theater, and we too are grateful for the support of the arts. The excellence in the community concerts that we've been hosting this year and look forward to doing next year are free concerts where we bring artists, local artists from Utah, and excited to present those. So we sincerely thank the council for their support. Thank you. Afternoon, I'm Michael Palumbo. I'm the conductor of Chamber Orchestra Ogden. Um, the orchestra, as some of you may know, started in 2010 when I was asked to put together a small group to play at the uh, uh, farmer's market, what well, we did, and the next thing I knew, they'd roped me into doing a regular orchestra. And so we're now in our sixth, seventh, seventh year of uh, concerts. We do three concerts every season, uh, and uh, I guess in 1819, we're going to do four concerts. I look accusingly at Michelle. No, we have uh, we planned that together. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to working with the Kruger Brothers again. They are an incredible group. Um, on behalf of the board, particularly the musicians in the orchestra, and myself, I want to thank you for your support again this year and your ongoing support in previous years. So thanks again. Thanks, Michael. Good evening. I'm Robert Fudge, and I'm the board president of the Ogden Symphony Ballet Association. Uh, the OSBA has been around for nearly 70 years, and we have uh, enjoyed your support for uh, many of those years. We are very grateful for that, and are grateful for your uh, continued support. Uh, this year, we have a lot of exciting programs coming. We bring the Utah Symphony, Ballet West, and other groups here to Ogden. And um, as part of our uh, Utah Symphony series, we have Brian Stokes Mitchell coming to perform. Uh, we have Audra McDonald coming to perform. Uh, both of those will be part of our entertainment series. And as well, we have Boris Giltberg, who is a European pianist who's just been bringing down the houses um, across Europe. And he'll be making his United States um, premiere performance here in Ogden, not in Salt Lake, but in Ogden. So we're very excited about that. Um, we also have uh, a Bach Festival uh, coming up. This will be our first year doing that, and that'll be in May. Uh, we're going to have uh, Bach performances at three area churches, at St. Paul's, at Holy Family, and at the Mormon Tabernacle. In addition, something that we've been doing new this year is we've been partnering with um, other organizations. So, for example, we've been partnering with um, the WSU String Project. Uh, we've been very excited to work with them because Really, um, all of our arts organizations, in order to be successful, we really need to be uh, pursuing a common mission. Um, additionally, we've uh, expanded our outreach and educational opportunities here uh, in the city. We have uh, a brand new uh, outreach coordinator, Andrew Watson, who joined our organization just within the last, what's it been now, Andrew, six months? Yeah. So it's been very exciting uh, being able to offer educational opportunities to the libraries and, and other venues. So we thank you again for your ongoing support. Thanks, Robert.
Hello, um, my name is Amir Jackson, and I'm with the Nurture the Creative Mind Foundation. And I uh, just wanted to give you a few um, highlights of programs that we've launched and been a part of this year. Uh, we led the mural project for Joe McQueen recognition, uh, the Ogden Arts Festival, the NCM Street Piano Project, uh, the Ogden 52 Project. We launched a recording studio that is Ogden's only recording studio that is free to young people to come and learn how to record and record music. Uh, we had a partnership just recently with KUER and NPR where we launched a youth-driven podcast. Um, the youth uh, talked about subjects such as diversity, um, Ogden's transformation, and youth depression. Uh, and that was uh, NPR's first youth-driven, directed, produced podcast. Um, I also wanted to take a moment and uh, use some of my time, two minutes and seven seconds right now, uh, to talk about um, some of the other organizations that are doing some really amazing um, work in Ogden. Um, Good Company Theater launched a, a project this, this summer um, at the amphitheater. And um, when I attended, uh, you could hear people that it was their first time ever in Ogden. Um, and they were coming from Salt Lake, which is really boggles my mind that their first time in Ogden um, was just recently. But nonetheless, uh, Good Company Theater and what they did with that, uh, I can't remember, I think it was called The Heights, um, was amazing. Next Ensemble is doing really great work um, so far as taking uh, what is classical work and, and putting it into uh, abnormal areas, bringing it to the, to the general public. I think that's really great. Uh, Imagine Ballet, Ophom, uh, The Farmer's Market, uh, Piri's Egyptian, and Ogden First. And what I really would like to highlight is that um, the art organizations that are represented and that you all are supporting are not just doing cultural work, but they're actually bringing economic viability to this community. People from outside of Ogden are coming inside of Ogden to see these organizations and the work that they're doing. So it's, it's, I think it's important to state that the cultural work that we're doing is significant, but we also need to recognize and, and take note that there is also an economic uh, impact to the work that the artists and art organizations are doing. So thank you very much. Thanks, Amir. Hello. <laughs> My name is Lynn Goodwin, and I am the executive director of Treehouse Children's Museum here in Ogden. We are celebrating our 25th anniversary uh, this year and would not have made it to that point <laughs> without the support of Ogden City and uh, Weber County and so many private individuals and foundations and people who believe in what we were trying to do for children and families. Um, I want to second what Amir said. Um, all of these arts organizations make a real difference for our community and we're sometimes what people identify with as being the community. We have a family of members who are from Salt Lake who pass by lots of other museums on their way up to see us. And the grandmother of that family was telling me that the children don't call this Ogden City. They call it Treehouse City because <laughs> that's where they're headed when they're going north, which is great. And we love that. We love serving. Um, this year we'll top 180,000 visitors this year. Uh, and you may have heard the rumor that we are expanding. We hope that happens. We have negotiated a purchase of the property or part of the property to the west of us, a quarter acre, so that we can add on because we planned our building to serve about 125,000, 130,000 children and adults. And uh, we don't have room with 180,000 visitors. So we're looking forward to doing even more art with children, theater, and visual arts, and movement, and music, and all the good things we've been doing for so long. And we really couldn't have done it without your help. So thank you so much. We appreciate the Ogden Arts Grants very much. Thanks, Lynn. I'm Kim Boucher, the director of the Ogden Downtown Alliance. Um, we received a grant for several pop-up projects this summer. So um, we're doing four of those projects throughout the, the year. The last one will be during Christmas. Um, and they're always a surprise uh, to the public until the end. But I want to talk about one in particular, which is the first one that we did. Um, we are not an arts organization in and of ourselves dissimilar to everyone else who's spoken before me. Um, we're primarily um, 
built to promote downtown in terms of economic vitality and community engagement. But one of the things that we feel is incredibly important to all of that is the arts. And while I'm not an artist, um, one of the things that we are, we are really passionate about is making sure that we economically support our artists. A lot of times when we meet with people who are interested in bringing events to downtown or doing something inside their business, they're like, let's have an artist come and do this. And it's always for free. It's always the, the last thing to be added to the agenda. And we've really pushed and fought and had some really awkward conversations and saying, no, these people need to be paid. And they are, as Amir um, said earlier, um, there is an economic impact in supporting the arts in our community. And that starts with supporting the artists themselves. And so that's something that we've been really strongly advocating for. We're babies. We're not celebrating our 25th anniversary. We're, we're hitting our two-year mark. <laughs> But um, I'm so appreciative of the support that we've received from the city, um, from the council, and from administration. And the first project that we did with our um, grant this year was called Beats and Beats. It was on the Twinkie lot. Um, you heard about it earlier um, in your work session um, as some other name that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget what they said. But um, the Hostess lot is an abandoned piece of property that's being unused right now. And what we did is we um, put on a really small concert. We invited five different artists to paint murals live um, during the time that we had live music happening. And we invited the public to vote on those. All of them were displayed throughout the entirety of the farmer's market season. And we make it an appearance again later this fall. Um, but we're just so appreciative. And I, I thank you so much for supporting us and supporting all of these other arts organizations and promoting um, what we feel is an important part of our economic and just community vibrancy overall. So thank you. Thanks, Kim. Hello, my name is Erica Lyon. I teach over at Ben Lomond High School for Ogden School District. Um, and I just want to say thank you for supporting all of these organizations. I've worked closely with Nutri the Creative Mind, and my students have benefited um, from them being a part of our community. And I've also worked really closely with Eccles Community Art Center, and our students benefit um, from having the art up all the time, but also having their artwork put up. So thank you for that. Um, without these organizations behind me, our kids will not benefit, as you know, and nor would their parents. Um, the arts is alive and well in our public schools, and our teachers are doing work fervently um, to try to create a culture and an environment in which our students can thrive and be successful. Um, but they are not here because they are probably grading or tirelessly cleaning their classroom. <laughs> so um, on behalf of them, I just want to say thank you for supporting the arts in Ogden and making it visible not only to our students but to their families um, so that they also know that their creative endeavors in life are valuable as well. So thank you. Thanks, Erica. My name is Reed Galapna. I'm a resident member artist at Gallery 25. Even though we don't receive any grants from you, we really appreciate Lori Buckley. I'm sure she's with Ogden City Council. The fact that we have a flag that we put out, the fact that you give us flyers uh, that represent our gallery and all the galleries in this uh, county. If you could have seen the number of people we had Friday night, absolutely amazing. This city is turning around. I used to live in South Mountain and Draper. I now live here in Ogden, and this is a far better community than that place. Thank you so much. Thanks, Reed. Thanks, Reed. Thank you. Thank you. We like that kind of yeah. message. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stephanie Strait. I'm here representing two organizations for the Weber State String Project. I'm the manager of that program. I'll speak about them briefly. Um, as someone mentioned, funding has declined for arts um, in the entire U.S. and in this, this community as well. And at Weber State, the String Project is doing our part to help keep music alive for the youth in this community. Our program provides music um, through ensemble education and private lessons from third grade through 12th. And these students have access to very high quality education in music and are able to have a lot of doors open to them because of the funding we receive from Ogden City. Um, in addition, this year we have started a guitar program, which is brand new to us, and our, I believe our numbers are going to increase and we will reach more of the community through this. And we have also 
since I've been in Ogden, which is about seven years now, I've noticed the vibrancy of the nonprofit community and the arts community and arts supporters here. And I think it's such a wonderful community. All of, all of our organizations look to cooperate with each other and um, serve each other as much as possible. And as part of that, we have partnered with Youth Impact to make music available to their students, very low very or no cost in some cases. Um, and we are also working to work with other organizations like the Ogden Symphony Ballet Association. And we just want to continue that. And your funding is making more and more opportunities um, possible for us. So thank you for that. And for Next Ensemble, I'm the new executive director there. And your funding is just, with the stage that this organization is in, it is so vital. And it has been able to do, it's going to be, <laughs> doing so much good this year for us. Our vision is to make arts, especially music, particularly in music, more accessible to the general community. So many people feel closed off and secluded from the arts because of whatever their background is. And Next Ensemble is breaking down those barriers and increasing education and awareness and appreciation for music. And I just thank you so much for the funding that's helping to make that possible. Thanks, Thanks Stephanie. Council, Mayor, uh, my name is Brandon Long and I chair the Ogden City Arts Advisory Committee. So on behalf of the committee, I'm here to say thank you for your support, uh, not just financially, but personally, because when you come to the events, when you buy art, when you participate in the arts, it means a lot to the artists. Also, um, you know, we're not talking about major league contracts here uh, this evening. It's, it's not a ton of money for these artists, but as you can tell, it's everything to them. So, so thank you. I also want to say thank you to Lori and Christy, who work tirelessly. So thank you, Lori and Christy. They really do. Um, I have a short, a short poem in honor of my dad, who worked in this building in the planning commission, if I can get through it without crying. Uh, he died in 1978 of leukemia. It's called Agent Orange, subtitled Herbs. Shirtless, in short shorts, he sat on a yak and laughed, says the Kodak. Like summers on the Jersey shore, the Thai sun ravished. His silver stethoscope, an American tool that I keep, the herb smoked. The orange blossom free. He set his vows by candlelight. He took meat from the Ogden Mountains, and the orange blossom began to rot. His offspring four and not yet one, eat the herb, said the doctor. It dulls the pain. I read this poem because I believe in the healing power of the arts, and I believe that the arts can help bind our community and tie our community together. So thank you again, everyone, council, uh, chair, and mayor, for your support for the arts. Thank you, thank you Brandon. Anyone else? Um, I, close the public hearing? Yep. We should probably close the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Hire, second by Council Member uh, Lopez to close the public hearing. Is this a voice vote? Aye. 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 Got to say all in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, I, I think it would be appropriate before we vote on this to. Um, reflect and have public or our, our comments because um, usually what happens is people get up and leave and they don't get to hear us so um, I, I think it'd be appropriate if, if council members had comment have a couple comments real quick uh, so I obviously appreciate everyone being here and uh, expressing your uh, enthusiasm about uh, what you do and I always feel that I'm the one that want to thank you for everything you do because uh, it's really amazing uh, to live in this community and enjoy all these awesome uh, activities. And I had recently the opportunity to experience two particular uh, events. Uh, I actually went to the Excellence in the Community at the Egyptian Theater when the Mariachi Band came and that was amazing. Uh, I know you guys um, over exceeded your capacity there uh, for people. And it was just uh, uh, out of this world. And I, uh, Amir left, but uh, the Good Company Theater also, they're uh, in the Heights uh, 
theater performance that they put together that was really amazing. Uh, my daughter uh, actually had the opportunity to be in that, in that group, and uh, she would tell me stories about how uh, her life changed uh, positively uh, by participating in that. So I uh, just wanted to make those comments, and thank you all for, for everything you do. Thank you. Well, I'll say a few words, Chair Witt. Um, I would like to just thank all of you for being here tonight. I look forward to this meeting every year. Um, tonight's the night that people come and tell us positive things that's going on in our community, <laughs> and they tell us how great we are for allowing you to do these positive things in our community, um, not how we make it difficult or hard or impossible for you to do the things that you want to do. So we're glad that we can help out. Um, I applaud the previous councils that I've been on that, that fought to increase the amount. Um, they didn't get to see the benefits of it, but I guess they do in their community now. Um, it was something that I'm very proud of that we've continued to, to increase that amount. And, and after seeing the amount of the impact that it's having in our community, it's, it's, it's money well spent. And I'm, I'm thankful for everyone and for the time and the effort that you put into our community. And, and like, has meant, like has been mentioned numerous times tonight, it's um, our, our, our city and our residents, they receive way much more than the money we're, sending, we're, we're giving out. So, so thank you to all that you do and for everyone. So that's it. I'll jump in and just say, again, echo the thanks. But also I just, you know, it was mentioned and we've seen it among us, the diversity of art. Art is in so many forms and it touches us all individually differently. Um, and I just am so appreciative of the diversity of the different formats of art that we have. But mostly what I am very proud of is that we are doing everything we can to provide as many things as we can for our citizens for free, but also to involve the children. Um, they're, the, they're our future artists. They're the ones where we're opening up their creative minds. We're opening up their ability to see all the different forms that bring so much joy and happiness into our lives. And as Bart said, I look forward to this meeting too. I think of the events I've been to. I think about how we take you know, a parking lot and have a fun concert, just a small one, or we take you know, Fort Buenaventura and, you know, out along the river and have a O-Foam festival that is just beautiful and enjoyable. And you see, when you're at the festivals, what you see is the, the happiness. And that's truly what brings me joy. So thank you for all that you do, and I appreciate you so much. Sure, what if I may? Sure. I'm with Council Member Lopez. It, it does feel strange to be sitting here and for you to be thanking us when we should be sitting here thanking you. But you know what, I think I take that as a sign as of a, a really healthy community. It's really, uh, it's a little strange to think that this is a technically a political process, but um, it just isn't. And I want to thank, uh, thank Christy and Lori for serving up a process to us that has been so healthy. And uh, I want to thank all the members of the committee. I thank the, uh, thank you for the poem. I wish that I had taken meat from the Ogden Mountains last week during the muzzleloader hunt, but since I didn't, uh, your poem has certainly uh, nourished my soul today. Thank you to all those who are involved in, in making this really a, a fabulous process. The, the process and the people lead to a far better product for Ogden, so thank you. I have, I have a little something, if that's okay. Um, I remember years ago when the movie Mr. Holland's Opus came out, and uh, that had kind of an effect on me when they were downsizing the, you know, they had a budget cuts and they had to downsize the, the music program in the high school. And uh, Mr. Holland said, you know, we're gonna, we're emphasizing this reading and writing and all of this stuff, and he says, but if we cut all the arts, there won't be anything to read or write about. And, and that really does say something about a community that, that has such a healthy artistic uh, community. Um, it's a very healthy thing and, and it's been, I, I was, I'm very happy that we're increasing the amount uh, each year so that it can continue to grow and to seed new things 
that can grow up and be become mature and 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 help Ogden be be that center for for artistic uh, expression. Thank you all. I, I think the arts are very important to us as a community, and your contribution to Ogden is uh, endless. Uh, you add to our culture. You add to our quality of life, and that's what we benefit uh, from having the arts. Uh, Vice uh, Chair Hire mentioned uh, that we contribute each year to the funds of the arts. I can remember we were at thirty-five thousand, and and uh, now we're we're increasing the capacity of arts, but we're also increasing the capacity of quality of goods. Um, you know, the arts has something that we can all enjoy. You contribute uh, to the community, but also you contribute to the lives of those who live here. Uh, Pat mentioned that uh, if we believe in art, and, as, and I may add to that, that art is a reward and, and the benefits are never ending. Uh, what you do for our community is not measured in dollars, but it's measured in your gift to the community, but it's measured in sharing your talents to those who participate. And we thank you for that opportunity. As the artist himself. Now, I was gonna say, for, for those who don't know, he is our, our representative artist. Um, he's, he's a painter, so, and doesn't just paint houses. Well, <laughs> if the numbers are right, I'm okay. And, and I'm a singer. Yeah. Everyone sounds sounds good in the shower, right? Yeah. You also think you're a dancer. That's <laughs> um, uh, Let me just real quick comment, and then I'll turn the time over to the mayor. But one of the things that Kim Boucher said, which um, I, I think is really important, and, and is, is to strive for paying paying for art. I think um, that really resonated with me and, and making sure that we're, I know that many of you are asking your artists for uh, probably reduced pay and those kind of things, but um, I think hopefully these grants will help get us to being able to pay our artists that come here. So um, thank you for that comment. Mayor. Thank you very much and I'll uh just echo some of the comments that our contribution to what you guys provide to the community is minuscule in comparison. I had the great pleasure of managing the first six years of the ramp tax when I worked for Weber County. And um, I won't name any names, but I've had a handful of the people in this audience shedding tears in my office as they were trying to figure out how they qualified for ramp money as they were starting these startup organizations they didn't look to make any money they didn't l they knew they weren't going to make any money they just wanted to bring something special to the community and to showcase something that really mattered to them and that's i think phenomenal these are acts of the heart you don't get paid as has been said through through monetary books at the end of the day. Um, I do need to give a huge thank you to Christy and Lori. Lori's our resident artist. If you haven't seen her artwork on the ninth floor, um, she's phenomenal and we appreciate the passion and, and color she brings to what happens up there. You guys make all of this tick. We can't thank you enough for it. But we also really do need to thank everybody in this room that brings this storytelling, this sense of passion, this sense of community. Arts can be the glue that tie and bind all of our stories together. I'm set on a mirror left. I was going to say, you know, a guy like him that works with these kids and does such amazing work, um, it being a Dodger affiliate night as we celebrated a championship, he's the only guy I would have allowed to walk in and out of here with the Yankees hat on. <laughs> so I'll just put that on the record. <laughs> so if he ever chooses to look back, that can be there. But what you guys do is amazing. We can't thank you enough for it. I want to thank our staff for for what they do, but you guys are the ones that make all this possible. All you that pour your energy and passion into it, it matters. And those, as Kim said, I'm not an artist, but you provide a forum for art, and that matters as well, and you understand the importance of that. So I think everybody collectively in here has done an amazing job, and, and we thank you for what you bring. Comment. Well, Chair, ready for a motion? Yes. I would... Uh, make a motion that we adopt resolution 2017-20. I second it. Um, I uh, 
Vice Chair Heyer, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure who won that tie over there. <laughs> we have a motion by Vice Chair Heyer, second by Councilmember Garner. We'll give it to him. Um, to adopt the proposed resolution 2017 20. This is a roll call vote. Councilmember Blair? Aye. Councilmember Gardner? Aye. Councilmember Lopez? Aye. Councilmember Nadalski? Aye. Councilmember Stevens? Aye. Vice Chair Heyer? Aye. Chair White? Aye. That passes. And thank you for all you do. <laughs> you don't have to leave if you don't want to. <laughs> Next on our agenda is public comments. This is an opportunity to address the council regarding any concerns or ideas on any topic. Seeing no movement forward, comments from the mayor. Typically, as we roll into the playoffs for Justin's benefit, I'd say go Giants, but on this occasion, I'm going to say go Dodgers. <laughs> uh, any other comments from the or mem council members? I will take just a second. Um, this last week was real special and neat for me. Last week on Thursday, I got to go down to Youth Impact and present the resolution to Youth Impact. Um, Rob Hall was not able to be there, but it was neat to see the impact that he had had on those children. There was probably 40 when we were there, 50? Yeah, that's I saw. 40 or 50 kids there. Uh, they all knew who he was. They were all, we asked them to sit down. They sat on the hard floor. They were respectful. They listened. They were very great, and it was, it was neat to see what they do. Um, the next night, I got to see Rob Hall at another event. Um, and we asked one of the children, one of the youth that had been through his program to present him with a game ball at the football game. Um, this young man came up when he saw Rob Hall standing there. He began sobbing. This is a big football player, and, and he was really having a hard time controlling his emotions. Um, and he, he kept hugging Rob Hall and telling him, he just couldn't, he couldn't do it. He couldn't play tonight. He, he, he just didn't feel like it. And, and Rob was such a mentor. Rob talked to him, told him how proud he was of him, uh, really, really comforted him and, 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 and coached him, for lack of a better word. Um, and it was neat to see the impact after he had his little moment um, at the football game. Kids came up to him, kids came out of the stands, kids came, uh, two kids came out of the color guard, um, put their flags, had someone else hold their flags, and, and came up and, and hugged Rob Hall and thanked him for everything that he'd done. And it was neat for me to see the kind of person that, that truly saw a need in our community and addressed it. Um, Rob Hall will probably, probably never be rich, but the impact that he has had on our community and the lives that he he has touched will make him very very wealthy and it was neat to to be able to see just someone in our community that that wanted to make a difference and and did it um and i was proud that i got to see that i was proud of of our community and and for the kind of people that that live here and i don't know what the diagnosis is for, for Rob Hall, but I know that, that youth impact is, is in great hands and, and it, will, it will last a long time and, and it will always carry on the legacy that Rob Hall started and it was, it was neat to be able to see that this last week. So thanks for allowing me to do that. Sure. Right, if I could just kind of echo that. I, that was what I was going to say if, if you hadn't said it first anyway, but uh, it was a very moving experience to go there. And to and to see the the very positive effect that's been happening because of because of that vision, um, it was great to see Bart be able to be there. You have some relationship with him that was prior, and and to make that presentation that started last Tuesday here in in these chambers. But um, it was really remarkable, and that's why I was thinking, boy, you know, if if, if everyone was like that, boy, we, it would be uh, utopia. It would be a great, it would just be a great place. I also was able to uh, spend a little time with the Hof students on Wednesday. Uh, they were only here for about an hour, and 
Uh, they had to, you know, they flew in and flew out really fast, but uh, pretty remarkable young group of people too there. And so um, a lot of fun also for our sister city relationship to have them come over it was really neat. Next on our agenda is a closed exec executive session. Move that we move into our closed executive session. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chair Hire, second by Council Member Garner to move into the closed executive session. This is a roll call vote. Aye. <laughs> Council Member Lopez. Aye. Council Member Nadalski. Aye. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Council Member Blair. Aye. Vice Chair Hire. Aye. Chair White. Aye, that passes. And we will be uh, adjourning from the closed executive session, so we will not be coming back into the chambers.